coming from uh, Whitehorse. If you, if you don't know where that is, uh, I don't blame you. It's like, I'm like almost in Alaska. It's like really close to Alaska. That, that's where I am right now. Northern Canada, never been here. It was a bit of a wild ride. We came from Toronto to Vancouver, then from Vancouver to Whitehorse, and then we were gonna fly. We stayed here last night, and then we were gonna fly this morning to a place called Dawson City. Flight got canceled, so uh, plan B. It's been a like, morning, eh? Yeah, it has been. I, I kind of broke this one. Oh, man. And, and you broke your, your iPhone this morning also already? This I morning? mean, everything has been going Flight the wrong canceled. way, pretty much. <laughs> but now we got things covered. We got car rental done, and uh, now we just got to drive like six hours. You going to split the drive with me, or, or what? I mean, I could. That would be fine, but I can't really drive. I could still do it, though. Wait, you don't have a license? Not really. Ah. Bear number one spotted. Uh, let's keep that count going. All right, well, we've been driving for like two or three hours, but fun, fun story. Um, I lost my sunglasses like like about a month ago and I actually bought new sunglasses. I couldn't find them anywhere. Then I forgot to bring sunglasses on this trip and then I found out I was going to be driving for the next three, four hours or whatever. And then uh, I was wearing this jacket that I don't wear that often, put my hands in the pocket and boom, sunglasses. The sunglasses that I lost perfectly came at the perfect opportune time. Uh, good coincidence. For you, there for you. We have arrived. All right, we have arrived in Kino City. It was a bit of a bit of a trek. Uh, you guys want to see the, the the aftermath of come here? Uh, yeah, I don't know if this was the right car to take. You can you can almost make out the license plate. Also, I I, I like how they communicate here. Uh, we got here and uh, we knew exactly where to go because of uh, this message. Hi and welcome Johnny and Maddie. I'm in number three. Without cell phone service, you kind of resort to different ways of communicating. <laughs> All right, so you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing in a place like Kino City, which you've probably never ever heard of because there's like 20 people that live here. Oh, well, we're shooting actually a documentary. I'm filming with uh, Johnny, the guy that you've seen already. He's a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker, a commercial guy. He also runs a, a YouTube channel called Creative North that you can check out him and his brother on that uh, super cool channel. And we're gonna be spending the next three, four, three, three, four days here in Kino City filming a doc or, or a part of a doc that um, they're mostly in charge of, but I've kind of come on board because one of my big five-year goals is that I wanted to film a feature doc. I just, I love docs. Docs are super cool. I love docs, especially ones that just kind of show or tell a story and leave you to think what you want. They show all these different angles and then you can think what you want about that topic subject. So this, this documentary is kind of about you know, the environment, climate change, that kind of stuff. But really what it's about is telling the story of different people around the world who are in some way affected by things that have happened to the environment or climate change or that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to, to tell these stories of these people because I just think it's really cool and interesting to come to a place like Kino City, 20 people live here and kind of follow different characters and figure out uh, what's going on in a, a little town like this, what, what it's like to live here, what kind of characters are here. So I'm really excited about this. And I thought through this trip, I would kind of, um, a, I want to talk about the gear we're using to film a documentary because it's totally different from the gear I normally use for this vlog YouTube stuff. Like, very different. Um, it might be really foreign to you, so I, I want to give you guys a glimpse of the stuff that we would use for documentary filmmaking. And a lot of this stuff is also used in the, in the commercial world, especially if it's more of a documentary type shoot. I also thought it would be really interesting to talk more about the doc world, especially since 
Johnny has actually made a whole doc and sold it to Netflix. So I think it's on there right now. It's called uh, uh, Pearl of Africa. Um, so he's actually gone through this whole process before. So I thought it would be really interesting to get some of his insight. Um, maybe we'll do that in another video. I, I actually don't know exactly how this, this week is gonna go. So uh, hopefully we can get all this stuff done and we'll see what else we kind of get up to. But so far, this has actually been one of the toughest trips I've ever had to do. And it's not because of the things that you might be thinking of, like, like for example, our flight got canceled this morning and then we had to kind of deal with all that. And even before that, a lot of our bags, they're saying, might not get on the plane. So we're stressing about that because we have a lot of camera gear and we can't just leave it in an airport. Uh, it was none of that, none of the traveling stuff. It was actually leaving my family at home. I, I've never felt like this. I was literally, no joke, I was crying like my eyes out. I was bawling at home. Just this, just the thought of leaving my wife and my 10 month old kid like, man, it was really, really, really hard. I've never experienced something. I've, I felt like a little kid having to leave home or it was really weird and uh, it, it almost made me, I have to like rethink how I'm gonna do this traveling thing in the future because man, I don't I don't know if I can do that too often, especially to my to my kid. I feel so bad. Like I literally left home with him uh crying as as soon as he saw me leave. I could hear it and it just like broke my heart. Like it was it was really, really hard. And I, I hope you guys appreciate this kind of honesty and openness. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I'm gonna have to start either traveling with my family or just traveling less because I don't know if I can do that too often. It was it was really, really hard. All right, so uh, that being said, uh, we're gonna go explore the, the town a little bit and try to find some food. Dang, it's, uh, it's raining out here. Apparently, uh, three nights in a row it's been raining here. And where we started off in Whitehorse, it was like beautiful out there. It was like 20 degrees and sunny and now it's rainy. Johnny, how you feeling? Oh, this is uh, the perfect weather. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Not really, like I was expecting sunshine, but that. So how do you feel about uh, being in uh, Kino City so far? It's kind of like Sami Sweden, but still very different because it's american yeah you're from sweden right like i don't Americanized. know if my audience knows that you're from sweden right yeah, right. yeah like outside of stockholm so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from sweden and, and what do you do in sweden mainly i kind of direct films and commercials i used to be a dp but now maddie is dp <laughs> so heck yeah <laughs> kind of worked out back in the dp world uh it's it's interesting i haven't been on on this side of things shooting somebody else's project or being a part of somebody else's vision for a little bit so it's like it's bringing back a lot of old memories and then I'm having to dust off some old skills I feel like it'll be a, a bit of a, a relearning experience I think how cool is this building I feel like I'm in a western all of a sudden I haven't introduced Chris yet he's our he's our fixer he lays down the groundwork so when we get here things are kind of figured out we kind of know what we're doing sort of we're still figuring things out but he's done a good job so it's, it's really good having a good fixer so we're actually going to the Kino City Hotel to eat. Oh and yeah. That is the only place where you can eat. <laughs> and they pretty much have one <laughs> dish. <laughs> so it's no a options, set really. menu. <laughs> much like all the fanciest places. This oh, is that. Sick, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, we're just kind of walking around, getting a feel for the city, but then also meeting the people that here who are massive. eventually gonna be the subjects of the documentary. So uh, yeah, this is kind of like uh, laying down the groundwork. We're, we're just getting to know the people so that then we can, you know, bring out their stories and bring out all the experiences that they've had and all that stuff. So, yeah, this is the fun part. Jim, the, the bar, bar owner, said that this started by... How did you say this started, the, the wall? Uh, one guy that uh, was here uh, actually was drinking one night and had five bucks left before he left. He wrote his name on it, put it on the wall. He said, if I need a beer and I come by and I don't have any cash on me, I got five bucks. <laughs> on reserve. And then that started everything else. So there's money from all over the world up there. First characters? Yes. Yes, character. It's definitely a character. Oh, yes. He's awesome. I yeah. like him so far. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some uh, interesting characters in a town like this. And I, I just think it's super cool. I really like coming to a place like this. Gino City. 
Yeah. Is that the spinoff of this doc? Yeah, I, I pretty much think it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we had some uh, meat pies. How's, how's your meat pie? Very delicious. It was delicious. All right, it's, uh, it's time to set up the camera and uh, get out there and start filming the dock. I'm excited, wish us luck. I'm hoping this turns out really, really well, but you, you never know with docks. It's kind of like improv. You try to plan a lot and then you just gotta go with it. This is the C300, this is the camera I'm gonna be using. Gotta set this whole thing up and get the easy rig out and all that good stuff. I'll explain maybe tomorrow or the next day what all this is, but for now I just gotta get it set up. Boom, that's it. Uh, I'm ready to go ghost bust or, or, or film a documentary. I'll see you guys in a, in a little bit. Uh, time to go work. <sighs> it's been a long day. It's, uh, it's, I don't know, you could probably get, it's 11.52 and it's still bright outside. It, it reminds me of Finland, land of the midnight sun. So that's day one of shooting. Um, I kind of wanted to just give you guys a behind the scenes of what happens on an actual dock shoot. Um, and hopefully I can get some more insight from Johnny also later on if we're not too busy. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to take you guys on a bit of a ride, share some tips and talk about gear and stuff. We'll, we'll do that uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first day of doc filming. Uh, I think I'm going to get some sleep now. I'm super tired. It's like 4 a.m. Um, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. It's late uh, Toronto time. Uh, all right, that's it for this one. Uh, I'm going to go to sleep now.